Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of World End Economica. My name is Fuds, and as ever, let's get straight back into the story, shall we? Afterwards, Hagana was nodding off by dinner time. When she dropped a spring roll, Lisa took Hagana's chopsticks away gently. Hagana resisted childishly for an instant, but quickly her eyelids drooped as she fell asleep. Really now. Even though she said that, she seemed happy in a way. For now, she got Hagana to stand up somehow, picked her up with both arms. Since Hagana was slender, Lisa was able to hold Hagana completely in her arms. Lisa wobbled a bit, but managed to carry Hagana into her room. It took quite a while, so she probably changed Hagana's clothes too. Recently, she's been staying up all, all late into the night. Oh? Oh, you didn't notice? No, when I fall asleep, I don't wake up. Ah, how nice. I wake up quite easily. You probably don't exercise enough. When I said that, Lisa fell silent and glanced down. Where she looked, to pursue it was Lisa's good name, I'm pretending not to see. What if it's exercise? No, wait, we're not talking about that. Huh? So, in the end, how was it? How was what? I munched on the spring roll Hagano dropped. Hagano's program thing. Ah, it was a huge success. Maybe we can aim for a top prize. I said as I was scooping up rice. Hagana didn't really eat much, but she seemed to like Chinese food and always wanted to make sure everyone got the same proportions. With her down for a count, I guess the rest was mine. When I reached out for some steamed dumplings, Lisa hit me. But it won't be any for her tomorrow morning. Don't make that face. So a huge success, really? Damn it. Yeah, it's true. No? And so there was relief. Lisa spoke while looking towards her garden's room. Then she turned to me and put on her own dumpling on her plate. I didn't mean for you to give me yours. Always oh, a stubborn one. Lisa sighed and hunched her shoulders. But, I see. That's good. Lisa had a kind of relieved, quiet smile on her face. She stirred a small bowl of soup and handed it with a piece of lotus root. I had a feeling that it wasn't, wasn't because the programme was working and making money. With my chopsticks in my mouth, I stared at Lisa a bit, when, suddenly when she suddenly raised her head. Holding chopsticks in your mouth isn't polite. Oh, shut up. Swearing, I moved some stir-fry to my plate. While I was stirring that well-seasoned dish, I knew Lisa was looking at me, smiling. But I wanted to pretend like I didn't see. Lisa kept looking at me until I put my plate down on the table. Setting my plate down, I tried my best to glare at Lisa. What? Huh? However, all Lisa did was tilt her head slightly. Grown women. It was embarrassing and frustrating, but even so, I didn't hate it. That really pisses me off. I just thought that, wow, these sort of things happen too. Well, good coincidences. With just that, I had a feeling I understood what she was saying. Oh no, you don't know all you possibly could after all. Being told that straight to my face, it felt like I was being made fun of. Drinking in the soup, I hid my mouth. Not particularly. <laughs> Lisa laughed and took a slow, deep breath. If you weren't around, what would have happened to us, I wonder? Not Hagana alone, or Lisa alone, but the two of them together. If I weren't around, what would have happened to him in the church? I tried imagining what would have been like. I could only come up with a wretched image. <laughs> I'm probably imagining about the same too. If two girls together wouldn't feel very restrictive, but at times things get a bit too heavy. You're young enough to be a girl? When I muttered that, Lisa glared at me with a smile. Jeez. You don't like it, so I don't say, but really, I was so thankful I didn't even know what to say. There was that selling books thing, but I was just knowing how I could do about Hagana. I just couldn't find a serious way to answer Lisa's words. And you're saying it right now. Heh, <laughs> words are difficult things, aren't they? I do like that um, grinning face of Lisa's. Lisa said cheerfully, even I could tell she didn't provide a move for my sake. Lisa had really been in a dangerous situation. 
If you weren't the type of adult I hated, you should have fawned more or been stubborn and turned my suggestion down. But Lisa just accepted quickly. I didn't even try and push her thanks onto me. Even though I knew I looked like a useless blockhead, she didn't even cut me much when I was dealing with Ghana. At home, even in fields, almost nothing that could be done at her own. Every day someone got help from someone, and that was natural. Though I saw over and over just how great adults behaved. Though I learned to keep things to, keep thanks to a minimum, not to try and give effective help ineffective help. And saying still that was the hardest thing for those being helped. For those helping, I knew they felt more more at ease that way. This was being a perfect example of that. However, I also know those who were receiving help also felt more at ease if something were requested of them by my thanks. Especially if I felt thankful. That's why I hesitated. After all, my hesitation subsided. I finally spoke. Are you going to do something for me in thanks? Or is it funny getting me like getting gonna get my lap pillow? I tried to speak gruffly, but I was so nervous I stuttered. That might have been partly why Lisa's eyes popped at me. You'd let me? And she asked that back. You seem like you'd hate it, so I've been holding back, but... Lisa spoke while giving a bit of troubled laugh. Modesty, self-control, disgusting generosity. I gave Lisa a futile, a furtive glance and spoke. For example, oh, that's right, um, like a feast or something. Aren't you broke? Oh, cook is pure feelings. What about you then? Is there something I can do? Don't hold back and just let me know. Saying that, she straightened up. Unlike her garner, her shapely bust clearly affected the shape of her clothes. In my head, there was a phrase that had been spinning around, just one phrase, but I didn't have a courage to speak it. Ah! Lisa said and put a hand to her mouth. Well, maybe you want to take a bath together or something. I wouldn't mind that. What? What are you, stupid? I knew my face was bright red, but it, but it wasn't like I didn't, didn't have ulterior motives, so I objected as strongly as I could. Lisa was simply laughing loudly, when she rested her cheek on her hand, elbow on the table, and spoke somewhat happily. In five years, when you become a good man, I'll think about it. You're an old lady, then. Smiling whilst angry, that was one of Lisa's skills. But even so, Lisa ultimately just burst out laughing. So what do you really want? Just come out and say it. From across the table, I realised just how unbelievably childish I was. La. La? La. I had no idea if I'd said it clearly. Lisa became surprised and an unspeakably satisfied smile came across her face. With her cheek still resting in her hands, she impolitely ate a dumpling. Looking at her long chopstick, she moved in a circle. Should I do it, I wonder? It's so obviously on purpose, I almost died of shame. But finally, Lisa gave a small nod. Keep this quiet, from her gana. When I said that, Lisa gently lowered her eyes. Of course, if boys didn't have secrets, I'd die, right? In the end, she even cleaned my ears with an ear pick. If she said she'd do it one more time for 50,000 balls, I was scared I might pay. Well, we're doing a CG of the black pillow. Oh, that's very, very disappointing. The next day resulted in a huge advance. We're making a ton of trades, even her Ghana's program missed at times. But when that happened, I compensated with a good feel. The Ghana complained it was indefinite and couldn't be relied on. But no choice because that was how market sentiment worked. In any case, it took me a lot less effort searching in stocks, so let me concentrate on trading just that much more. On top of that, the idea of having a tone sound off when my price fell to a good spot was brilliant. 
If you ask me, which, which was the best part of the program, that might have been it. Every stock would get 0.5 to 1% gains, occasionally 1.5% and it just piled on furiously. 15 million more quickly grew over to 25 million. The Ghana's ability to watch the trading screen grew longer, and I started being able to have a bit more mental bandwidth during trading. We started talking while I traded about how to improve a program. Heck, Ghana's education was amazing. Or then when she ate and slept, it seemed like she was only thinking about this. Occasionally, Chris would come by with a question while she was delivering, and somehow she'd get asked a question herself. Of course, Chris was stunned. I hope she was still a student, not just me. But she wound up listening quietly to totally unrelated statistics or some other formula with me. And also, if Agana thought of something, she apparently should have nothing else in her mind. I said I'd jump out of the bathroom and run to her room a number of times. Of course, she was totally naked. She didn't even carry a towel. The first time we'd been messing with my laptop, so the table, so Lisa had been studying on the sofa. We were so surprised, we just sat there, stunned, looking at Hagana. Just after Hagana flew into her room, Lisa finally came to herself and flew after her. I watched Lisa go, slowly returned my eyes back to a computer like a robot, but run out of oil. Hagana's smooth body was burning to my retina. Streamlined skin seemed seemingly soft, yet shone like porcelain. It seems so much like the dolphins I saw at the aquarium. I was moved. When Nick brought Hagana back wrapped in a sheet, I definitely couldn't look over. After shoving Hagana back into a bathroom and shutting the door with a great sigh, Lisa shook her head mournfully. After a second time, Lisa just can't be meant to return Hagana to a bath like a household chore. By the fourth, apparently Hagana learned to take a terminal into a bath with her. However, Lisa gave it and allowed her to take it into a bath. Apparently, she thought that holding it with red hands might get her electrocuted. In that way, the program was improved. We also learned how the program worked. I managed to find an accurate, learning places where I could trust it and places where I couldn't. Many times I thought it felt like gears coming together. In the imaginary space of a wrestling contest, it was like we were playing a game of chance where we knew most of the odds. In that situation, you could say it was only a matter of time before my greed came out. Well, at the beginning, I hadn't thought I'd be able to use the Ghana this way. Even thought it even though it was just a fake market for us to be profiting with consistently, there wasn't a reason not to. Essentially, applying it not just for a fake market, but for real trading. Eh? When I brought the subject in the space between breakfast and trading, Hagana was so surprised she apparently hadn't even imagined it. A thing I made? Yeah, the program you made. Hagana was just staring at me blankly. Looked at my program was in the middle of calculating parameters, and looked at me once more. But this was made for a contest. It can't be totally useless. The garden looked at me repeatedly. She looked at me like I was talking birdsong and she had no idea what I was saying all this time. But, the real market. You can't try it. We're using the past data from a contest for testing, right? That's true. Then do that with real data. If it works out, we'll do, do it. That's alright. To me, it was an awfully obvious conclusion. Or maybe there's just technical reasons why we couldn't. It looked like that impossible. No, it's not impossible. Then please try. But Hagana's reaction was muted. Looking away, she seemed to be hesitating. What's wrong? That's when I asked her, she looked up at me and seemed surprised. Then she looked away again. Oh, are you thinking about sharing of profits? Hagana seemed sometimes to be greedy, and sometimes not. She was probably concerned about that when it came to real trading. I asked her, thinking it was that, but surprisingly, Hagana's brows furrowed out of simple uneasiness. It's not that. But what is it? If things are going this well, it doesn't mean anything if we don't try it for real. Gazing at Hagana, she looked downwards. It started to feel like I was picking on her. I had no idea why she was hesitating. I didn't have anything else to say, so I just... I also just couldn't just say, but let me borrow a program. Just was wondering what was going on, Hagana spoke, still looking down. A real market. Yeah? She looks up slowly. It involves money, right? A worried face. Well, of course. But I don't think it would go well. Saying that, Hagana lowered her raised face again. Her eyes turned back to a terminal. 
Her thin fingers slowly touching the screen, changing prices in the program. I looked at her and wondered if I would turn stupid. I just did not comprehend what she said. What? I don't think it would go well. I got her spoke clearly, but didn't look up from the terminal. I asked her one more time. Why do you think that? Hell, you can't just try with the data. The program's built for that, right? Hagana's hands were still inputting the data on the terminal, as I spoke, but when I stopped, her hands did too. When she made to look at me, it stopped part way. And then her hands started messing with the terminal again. I finally lost it and grabbed her thin fingers with my fists and turned them towards me. Answer me, this thing you made. I think it's amazing. It's giving results. Not using it in real trading is idiotic. Hagana slightly tried to free her hands from mine, but there's no way she could throw up my grip. I let go of her hands, but not because she started clawing it or tried to bite. Suddenly she looked like she was about to cry. Don't cry. I'm not crying. Saying that, she just pressed her lips tightly together. Apparently trying to hide she was about to cry, she spoke curtly. I don't think it would work in the real world. It was the same thing. There wasn't any reason. There was something like a firm belief. The army simply would have gotten angry and shouted and we just have a fight and go nowhere. However, now I knew a fair amount about Hagana. She loved maths, and even though her program she made was giving such amazing results in the fake market, she still firmly believed with no supporting evidence that it wouldn't work in the real world. It was almost a pitiful kind of self-defence mechanism. Things had never gone well, so it would never go well in the future. She just didn't want to get hurt anymore holding out hope. That was essentially what she was saying. I remembered what Toyama said, a chick that hadn't even hatched from a shell. I gave Hagana a shell a small jab. It's not a problem we can fail. Hagana looked at me with unreadable eyes. The eyes were like pools of thick black ink. There were demons in the market as well as tons of pitfalls. If you had a perfect theory, it's probably impossible to win every single time. However, if you do reasoning behind the winning, but if you stood for, through to the end, you should win. Didn't I say? We just keep going until it works. Plus, even if we lose, I'm not going to tell you to take responsibility. But if it works, I'll give you 20% of what we make. How about it? There's no downside in it for you, right? It's like that thing, that bonus lottery ticket. Expected value. I gotta said that immediately, then paused. She looked up at me. But. I said but again. The shell still firmly held shut. However, from between cracks she could hear. I'm scared. It's probably because I was someone who came from a lucky walk of life. I've been bought with money from a wretched country to a harsh earth. No other experience in life where I had to cry in a corner, protecting my head. That's why I wouldn't say when I knew how Hagana felt. If I knew what words I wanted to say were. I looked into Hagana's eyes. Looked so directly I could see myself in him and spoke. I'm afraid myself. I'm putting my entire fortune on the line after all. You'd think about what happens if you'd lost all your money. When my net worth dropped 1%, so that was when my body had 1% of it cut off. If you consider Lisa's body was made of books and mine was made of money. Hagana looked at my eyes and swallowed like she had a small hiccup. And then she lowered her eyelashes weakly and her eyes swimming. I was about to shout. However, Hagano's swimming eyes went to my computer screen and smoking a small voice. Trading. Yeah? It started. Letter by those words, I looked to a screen. And I ended the episode. Well, as ever, thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Join me again next time when we start trading. Again. Bye-bye.